The first um, mention of music in the Bible is in Genesis. And uh, I, I might pronounce it wrong. It's Jubal or Jubal. Uh, and, uh, but the first corporate worship mentioned in the Bible is in Exodus when the Israelites are freeing slavery and they're going across the Red Sea. And, you know, the, the army gets swallowed up in the, in the sea. Once they make it to safety, Moses incites the first documented, sorry, uh, corporate worship moment there. And um, the song that they're saying is, can be found in Exodus 15, verses 1 and 2. Yeah. So that's the first documented in the Bible time where there is corporate worship. And then in Exodus 3, I'm mean Exodus, Exodus 15, verses 3 through 18, there's another moment where Moses and the Israelites have another recount of the amazing, miraculous power of God, how he saved them. And they have another moment, and Moses' sister, Miriam, gets a tamarine, she gets a tamarine, and she leads worship and dance and playing the tamarine and singing songs. I don't know. Uh, I actually didn't know that for a while, because for a minute uh, in my life, I felt like what we do was just a vain thing, and it was just something we all just made up, and it was meaningless, and I would hear people say things like, you know, one day we're not going to need worship leaders anymore, or, you know, we don't really need worship leaders. What, what is even a worship leader? You know, you talk to someone who's not familiar with church or not very fond of church, and they're going to be like, you, you lead worship? What do you, you know, what, is, what does that mean? You have to devour, uh, divulge even more on that. But um, I came to a, a moment in my life where, I started just searching for meaning in what I was doing uh, because I was allowing things said and things spoken to kind of shake what I believed about what I was doing. Like, am I just singing songs? Like, what am I doing? Am, are we missing the mark? Do we need to shift and do something else? And sometimes the answer is yes, but the bottom line is what you do has so much meaning. What you do, please keep doing it. Please keep diving into it because it is a biblical assignment. As children of God, we are all vessels waiting to be filled and poured out, filled and poured out, filled and poured out. And we all are worshipers, which is, you know, mentioned in Romans 12 and 1. Um, and I believe as worship leaders, that's the first thing we must always remember. That should be our posture is remembering that we are first worshipers. And we're not first worship leaders. We are worshipers. So when we're standing on a stage leading a room, it's not because we are the most spiritual. It's not because we are, you know, the thing. It's we are just the worshiper that has been chosen to lead worship. So we are worshipers first. And before we sing a song or play a song, we're still worshipers in the way that we live and love people and live and love God and, and honor God. Um, and I know that's, ba I forgot to tell you, it's going to be some basic teaching up in here. I ain't got no truth bombs, no blow your mind, nothing, none, none of that. None of that is happening today. I uh, just wanted to remind us because we're even in a time in the church where just our faith is being shaken and what we're doing. There's a lot of us who are leaving uh, the institution of church and saying, I, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, why am I doing this? Or they're burnt out. Or they've been convinced that there's no need for what they were doing. So I just wanted to kind of stoke the fire and add some more lighter fluid to a fire that might be going out. That's it. Um, yeah, so Romans 12 and 1 says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. So we stand on stages to be seen responding to the love of God, but not to be seen. And it's very easy in what we do to want to be seen first because you got the practical things like, you know, you got to make sure you're wearing the right thing. <laughs> you got to make sure you look presentable. So you got to make sure you maybe get a haircut, you know, things like that. So it starts, it can easily be this thing where I'm putting more energy into what I'm looking like 
what I what I'm presenting to people rather than what I've actually prepared to do in this warfare because worship is warfare. Yeah. So we stand on stages to be seen responding to the love of God, not to be seen. But we will be seen. That's also another thing that we must admit. We're on stages, so we're on platforms. So there is an element of performing. You have a microphone. You have speakers. You might have lights. And people are visual people. People need to see you model lifting your hands and, and model dancing, model worshiping the Lord in spirit and in truth. So there's an element of performing. But still at the end of the day, we are there to be seen responding to the love of God. And we are there to lead others to respond to the love of God as well and to be a model and a mirror for them 